What up, what up, what up, Hexacans? What I want to do today is go over a tutorial on how to set up a Coinbase. All right, so just for a quick overview, what you're going to need to get started is, assume you're going to do this on your mobile device with uh, working phone numbers, because it's going to verify your phone number on that device. You're going to need a driver's license, because it's going to verify your identity. You're going to need a working camera on the phone that allows you to take a, a picture of the front and back of your driver's license. You're going to need the username and password for your bank where you log in online for their plaid, the way that they connect your bank account to theirs. And then you're also going to need access to your email account so that you can verify your email address when they send you a, a verification email. The other thing that I also want to like put up front is that when you do go to buy cryptocurrency, there's like a little blue text that tells you at the bottom, like we're going to hold this for X amount of days and the days vary. I've seen as high as 11 days. I think the average is like six to nine days that, that they're going to hold your money on the platform before you're allowed to send it to MetaMask, right? So that needs to be stated up front. They do this. There's, it's like, so if you're buying Ethereum to make a purchase rather than USDC, which has no fees, and you're not expecting that there's going to be a seven day wait or whatever, you know, the price of Ethereum could be going down while the price of the asset you're waiting seven days to buy could be going up, right? You know, like I, if you're going to buy Hex, for example, I would recommend like just buying the Ethereum that you're going to need for gas fees and then the rest of what you're going to actually purchase Hex with in USDC. That's going to be the way to do it. The last thing I want to point out is the gas fees in Ethereum are high. And from what I'm seeing for onboarding is about $200 of what people are investing is going towards fees for buying Hex at the decentralized exchange and then staking. And it, you know, it, it's, it depends on the type of like how many stakes you want to stake. Cause that could go up to two, it could be 30, $40 to stake. Um, we're solving this with pulse, right? We're, we're, we're rolling out a different network and forking Ethereum to, to deal with this. But as of right now, you know, and, and the move in the move definitely is buy hex now so that you get a copy of it when pulse, when pulse chain launches at the snapshot. And the other thing that I want to say about the high fees is you know back in 2009 2010 something like that if it cost you five hundred dollars to buy a dollar's worth of bitcoin and you held it till right now would that would that be uh, worth it that's kind of what we're dealing with here the high fees are what they are and the the headache is what it is but it would be worth it because you could be <laughs> you could be sitting on quite a few bitcoin if you were buying it for for pennies or or something like that, you know, back in 2009, 2010. So that's the point that I want to make about these high fees. You know, it, it I, I get it, but it's still like if you're new to this, it's worth it to, to it's it, it's worth it to um, to pay a little bit in fees and, and, and get your feet wet and understand what's going on here and how to use these these networks in this system now i've onboarded a bunch of people into coinbase recently so i know what a lot of their questions are these are people who are new to crypto and they're not sure what they're getting into it's like why do i have to give coinbase my uh my banking information this is different to me this is this doesn't feel right to me the answer that i tell them is coinbase is federally regulated just like any bank for all intents and purposes you're signing up to another bank and you're going to trust this account to pull money from your bank account to buy crypto with it. And then from there, you're going to be able to take your money or your cryptocurrency and send it to a MetaMask wallet, which isn't controlled by Coinbase. It's going to be a wallet that you control, right? And so you're going to custody your money. Your money's in your bank account. You don't custody that. They're custodying it for you. Then you use Coinbase to take your money and buy cryptocurrency. And it sits on that exchange where you still don't custody it until you send it to MetaMask. And so you need to do some things like uh, KYC, know your customer, AML, anti-money laundering. Those are uh, protocols or regulations that are put in place by the entities that want to surveil you. It's just, there's, that's a fancy word for surveillance. That's what it is. And we must comply in order to take custody of our money. So it is what it is. And there are other, this is called, Coinbase is called an on-ramp and off-ramp, right? Because you on-ramp from, from legacy finance 
to buy cryptocurrency and you off ramp to sell cryptocurrency for dollars and put it back into your bank account. It's the bridge from the old economy into the new economy. And so it's tightly regulated and to set it up is a bit of a pain. My opinion is everyone in the world needs to get one of these accounts. They need to on ramp into the new economy and therefore Coinbase understands that. And so their customer service is, is horrible. Don't lose your password. Keep your password and everything with to do with Coinbase in a safe and secure space and take care of it. The next piece of advice I will give you is to set up Coinbase from your phone and use Coinbase from your mobile device. You can do it from your laptop. It's possible, but it's, you know, Coinbase needs to access a, a camera to take a picture of your driver's license. And that's easier done on your phone, right? When you go to send a uh, cryptocurrency to your wallet, you're going to need a camera to take a picture of the, the QR code of the wallet that you're sending money to, and that's easier done from your phone. So this whole process is, is, is easier in the short term and the long term when you do it from your mobile device. What I did was create a Coinbase account um, for somebody and then record the process because you can't screen record it. I just had to record it with a, with a camera and then edit out the information so that you can see the imp, like the 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 on screen the from your phone onboarding process of what it looks like right so what you're looking at now is basically the first screen that you're going to see when you go to create a new account in coinbase and what it wants is your name first and last your email address and your password right that's the that's the first image pretty self explanatory then it's going to tell you to verify your email, right? So you need to have access to your email. Some people get hung up there. Oh, I don't got my email address. I don't have access to it. No, you need that. You need access to your email so that you can verify that the email that you gave Coinbase is active and you control it. So it's going to need that. And so there's the next screen from your email to verify, right? And it's best if you do that on your device. That way it all can talk to each other. And the next thing is, the next screen you see is it, let's secure your account. So step one is create your account. It shows you that that's completed. Step two is secure your account. And then step three is gonna be verify your identity. So let's keep going. You click start. All right, secure your account. One way to keep your account secure is with two-step verification. So you're going to give it your phone number, and then it's going to give you an authentication code, a seven-digit code that you then put in there and verify. That's So now they verified that your email is real. Now they're going to verify that your phone number from your mobile device is real. Okay. And then they want to know your citizenship. Go ahead and put that in there. All right. Step three, verify your identity. Step four, step three is verify your identity. All right, what it needs is your legal name, your date of birth, and your social security number, or the last four of your social. And it tells you, federal regulations require us to verify your identity. Don't worry, your data is always safe, encrypted, and secure. Now, okay, um, a little bit about that nonsense statement your data because it has been collected is going into a honeypot for hackers right and all your data has been hacked by multiple different honeypots that have been exploited and hacked before all of our names all of our data births all of our social security numbers all of our addresses all of our contacts everyone who we love and care about the whole nine all of that has already been hacked multiple times over so for them to sit there and say that is hilarious, right? One of the things that I want to point out about this centralized nonsense and collecting everyone's data to surveil them is this is a danger, right? The, the solution to this is don't collect data. Don't collect personal information. Therefore, we don't have to go through this nonsense. When you buy Hex at the decentralized exchange, it didn't ask for your email address. It didn't ask for your name. It didn't ask for your phone number. 
Okay. It's not going to ask for your photo ID. It doesn't need any of that information because it is just code. That's it. When you go to stake hex, right, to plug into a decentralized central bank for the world to get paid passive trustless interest, right? When you go to stake hex, it doesn't want your name. It doesn't want your phone number. It doesn't want your email. It doesn't want your date of birth. None of that information is asked for. Therefore, you can be sure that it's not collected because it doesn't care. It doesn't want it. It's just code. That's the revolution. That is one of the main differences between centralized finance and decentralized finance. There's no reason to do the AML KYC, anti-money laundering, know your customer. The reason why they get to enforce that on centralized exchanges is because human beings work for it. That's why. Because there are people there who can corrupt the process and therefore there needs to be oversight and regulation. But because the regulation is now the code, the code regulates everything and we opt into the code and therefore there's no need to have any kind of oversight. And the code is immutable anyway. There's nothing that they can do to change it. It's locked. Moving on. The next is enter your address, your, your, your physical address, your street address, right? And here we got residential address, apartment number, zip code, city or town and state should be self-explanatory. People ask questions. What will you use Coinbase for? The answer is investing. Okay. That's what I tell them to choose. They are, they are going to, if, if, if they're going to buy and stake hex, then they are using Coinbase for investing. What is your primary source of funds? See how we get all the way deep down into your life, occupation, investment, savings, inheritance. Okay. You guys, only you guys can answer that one. What is your employment status? Federal regulations require us to ask this question. Employed, unemployed, retired, student, or self-employed. Those are the answers that you get. And then from there, I believe it's going to go into detail. Um, how much crypto do you expect to trade per year? What industry do you work in? Okay, now we're all set up. We're going to see um, a main portfolio right where the side setting comes in and you have the opportunity to look at portfolio and settings learn and earn borrow cash earn and invest i don't mess with any of those portfolio and settings is what we want to set up and so the next thing we want to do is add a payment method coinbase uses something called plaid to connect your coinbase to your bank account and what it needs is your online username and password to get set up and some people have uh, trouble sometimes they can't find their bank in in the plaid system so then they need their routing number and their account number and there's a way to go through that and coinbase will link up your bank account by sending you just two small deposits um, once you receive those deposits you'll let coinbase know uh, the amount that it deposited to verify that that is your bank account that you're linking with coinbase and you should be good to go from then on once it's associated you have limits and features and everyone's different i always see like different limits and features um but the max I've seen is bank purchases, 35,000 a day. That's pretty maxed out. Um, yeah. And look, he, look in here at where it says send cryptocurrency and receive cryptocurrency. Right now, those are disabled. Okay. This is where the rubber hits the road. This is the most important part about Coinbase. This is the only reason we're using Coinbase. There's a bunch of different exchanges, Robinhood uh, and the like that will that you can take that will take your money and you can trade in cryptocurrency, but they won't let you custody it. They won't let you send cryptocurrency or receive cryptocurrency. You go in with dollars, you trade and gamble and you come out with dollars, but you can't leave with Bitcoin or any other any other cryptocurrency. So here this is this is the only time where they add. All right, now we need to see your driver's license. Now we need to see some form of picture ID and we want a selfie before we let you take this asset and send it into to where only you control it, right? And so to verify your ID, they're going to want a photo ID. This is why it's good to do this on your phone. Um, driver's license, right? 
And what I would say to, to what I would say to people is take a driver's license, put it on a black surface. Okay. They're picky about how the picture looks. They really are. They'll reject it. Right. And customer service is horrible. Right. So you just want to get this, you want to get this done without having to look for a phone. There's no place to call. You, you, you might be able to find some place to send them an email. All right. Like their customer service is, is non-existence and they've got millions and millions of clients and they're onboarding tens of thousands of people a day. Okay. So use a black surface, right? Put your driver's license on it and make sure there's no reflection, no glare or anything coming from it with a very steady hand, take a picture of the front, turn it over and take a picture of the back. All right. And from there you should be set up from there. It should enable your ability to see that your, it should enable your ability to send and receive, um, cryptocurrency.